Let me bring to the show our first guest this morning, Althea Spinozzi, Fixed Income Strategy, Saxo Bank. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Alexandra. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to kick off with a very simple question. What's driving the price action when it comes to the bond market? Well, let's say that at this moment, uh, what is driving the price action is uh, two things, which is a war, which is compressing uh, uh, the long part of the yield curve. So whatever is happening in Ukraine is obviously relevant, uh, not only for US treasuries, uh, but also for uh, European sovereigns uh, and guilds, because they serve as a safe haven. And in the front part of the yield curve, uh, well, the market uh, is uh, reconsidering uh, interest rate hikes uh, for 2022. At the beginning of the week, uh, we had uh, um, uh, a much flatter yield curve. We have seen it uh, boom steepening uh, uh, slightly throughout uh, the week as the market uh, has been reconsidering uh, like uh, 50 basis points rate hike in March. And, and also in the UK, we've seen rate hikes uh, um, being reconsidered quite uh, sharply. But Alexandra, I think that uh, at this point in time, uh, there is uh, a high level of uncertainty in uh, the bond market. And uh, realistically, anything uh, could happen um, before uh, the Federal Reserve meeting in March. Honestly, we believe that the Federal Reserve is trapped. On one side, uh, if it hikes uh, too much, it will uh, uh, rise concern uh, regarding uh, long-term growth, which is going to uh, push down the long part of the yield curve. But if it hikes uh, too much, uh, then uh, we are basically talking a possible uh, taper tantrum because obviously, uh, sorry, if it uh, hikes too little, um, what happens is that uh, at that point, we are talking about an inflation tantrum because obviously the market would be, well, you are not serious enough about uh, fighting inflation. So whatever the Federal Reserve is going to do, um, it's, going, uh, it's going to create volatility somehow. Yeah, this is absolutely um, amazing situation and very difficult situation specifically if uh, you are a central banker, doesn't matter whether you are um, leading the Fed or the ECB, pretty complicated. Uh, well, yesterday we've asked uh, Ricardo Trezzi, who is always focused on inflationary pressures to the upside, whether he supports um, extremely aggressive hiking uh, monetary policy, uh, let's say rates monetary policy to be more concrete. So he said that he's not favorable to that kind of policy because it doesn't have an immediate impact on the short term yield curve. Do you agree with him or you rather not? Well, I partially agree with him in the meaning that obviously if the Federal Reserve hikes uh, 25 basis points or 50 basis points uh, in uh, March, it doesn't really make much a difference, especially for uh, borrowing cost and mortgages cost, which uh, depend on the long part of the yield curve. If uh, the Federal Reserve wants to tighten uh, more effectively the economy, it's much better that looks at uh, balance sheet policies and that looks at uh, quantitative tightening. In that way, um, it can combine interest rate hikes with uh, selling uh, um, its balance sheet and obviously the yield curve would not invert so much in the short term. But also there is a fine line here, Alexandra, in the meaning that uh, if the Federal Reserve is also too aggressive uh, into selling bonds that they have on their balance sheet, uh, at that point, uh, uh, growth concern will surge again and the long part of the yield curve would remain compressed. So it's definitely not uh, um, an ideal situation for the Federal Reserve, but uh, we are very likely going towards a 50 rate hikes now in March. Um, tonight, of course, it's going to be tonight, of course, here uh, in Europe, not in the US, but uh, we're going to be hearing from Evans, Waller, uh, not to mention Brainerd. So it's a big day for, for Fed governors. Uh, and I was wondering, what's your take on Buller's approach? Because uh, some, sometimes we do not exactly know how to consider Buller's approach and the rest of the Fed governor's approach, since he's way more aggressive compared to his colleagues. Definitely, like he's a, one of the most uh, okish uh, or the most okish member uh, in the FOMC. Uh, but we have to consider that uh, uh, it is not been only Bullard being this okish. It has been also other members that are notoriously uh, dovish that uh, are uh, 
basically uh, quite oakish. Um, but at this point, uh, Alexandra, I, I think that uh, one of the most interesting uh, things that happened in the market this week has been yesterday's 30-year tips auction. Uh, we have seen it tailing badly around five basis points, meaning that there was not enough uh, demand uh, for the offer. And, uh, and that what is basically telling us uh, is that uh, the market uh, is, not, uh, um, is not willing to buy inflation protection now that uh, the Federal Reserve uh, is growing more aggressive. And, and final take, what are your expectations when it comes to um, Treasury yields and not only also European yields today, we, we do see this trend um, to decline, of course, to the downside. Uh, on the other side, um, just two days ago, the 10 year uh, Italian BDP yield, uh, you know, went above the 2%, which is certainly uh, an event here, at least for, for two years so far. So I was wondering, what are your expectations? Are we going to see those uh, higher yields in the upcoming quarters? It could be, it could be, if you're talking uh, specifically for uh, the European Union, so here it's a difficult situation, because obviously if the European Union finds itself in between a, a Bank of England, an aggressive Bank of England, and an aggressive Federal Reserve, it needs to hike rates in order to support the Euro, otherwise it will welcome more inflation. But of course, uh, envisioning a rate hike already in June or July, it's quite, uh, it's quite aggressive. Um, and uh, we don't believe that it's going to happen until the last quarter of the year. Um, so there should be some relief there. And that's why we also see the BTP boom spread reacting positively um, during these days, and especially now that uh, uh, European yields are compressed by a possible escalation of war in, uh, in Ukraine. But we cannot forget that uh, Italian BTPs are the most volatile, are one of the most volatile sovereign European sovereigns uh, out there. So, Anything that uh, is happening in terms of surprises, uh, interest rate surpri um, hike surprise in the in the U.S. or in the Bank of England, they are the most likely um, to react uh, uh, much more and uh, and to rise uh, in in yields. So we definitely see the BTP boom spread widening throughout the year. But in a long term perspective, we still see. Uh, an harmonization of the cost of funding across the European uh, space that will take uh, the BTP boom spread uh, basically close to zero. But we are talking a very long trend, a decennial kind of trend. Thank you very much. Jose Espinosi, Fixed Income Strategy, Saxo Bank. Thank you for joining us and of course have a great weekend. Thank you very much, Alexandra.